I gave CAD twice. But uh, what we need to understand is once I gave CAD in 2021, I secured 99.17 percentile and converted I'm luck now. But the reason I left it was for my UPSC preparation. So one part of my uh, brief would also include when to leave UPSC if anyone is still in that. If, I have seen a lot of people, especially in IMA. So I know a lot of batchmates who have a gap year of three years or four years. And a lot of people worry that they have gap year or should you MBA be a backup for them or uh, let's say when to exit UPSC or would that be a hurdle while uh, joining an IMA. So I'll also cover those aspects uh, in, due, uh, in due time. Uh, I'll start with a basic preparation. So I have had a, it's a disclaimer. I have had a decent background in mathematics and logical reasoning. I have prepared for IIT J mains. And uh, so therefore, I consider myself above average in the basic mathematic, mathematical portion. So my preparation for both the attempts in CAT 2021 and CAT 2023, which lasted for only approximately 25 to 30 days only. So my major preparation was based on previous year questions and mock papers. So, which essentially means that I used to do only practice and I didn't focus a lot on concepts, but that comes with a caveat that I considered myself above average in mathematical reasoning. If you are a beginner and if you want to start from the initial phases, my step-by-step -step strategy would be as follows. I'll start with section wise. I'll go with VARC first. So VARC is one section where there is a lot of subjectivity in options and the major issue that students face and even I faced because I uh, scored the lowest marks in VRC section in most of my MOOCs and a lot of students face this similar challenge. And the major reason is the subjectivity of options. You might think that option A is right, but according to the examiner's mindset, option C is right. How to go about it is the basic elimination technique, which essentially says that don't try to find the right option in the four options given. Try to eliminate three options and derive the correct option. So there's a difference in this approach. If you are going for a identifying the correct option, you might do a little bit of silly mistakes or answer the question in haste. But if you are uh, going through the elimination elimination technique, the probability of uh, giving a correct answer increases tremendously. But how do you also prep for the VR section is a reading. So there is no alternative to reading. You have to read as much as you can. Uh, I didn't have a lot of uh, novel reading habit per se, not a very big novels fan or a book, book reading fan. But since I was preparing for UPSC, etc., I had a good, decent reading speed and a decent comprehension speed because I used to read two newspapers daily during my UPSC prep. So a lot of diverse topics I could uh, understand very quickly because in, in, a, in a regular newspaper scenario, you have one, one day you have international relations topic, one day you have, uh, let's say, political science topic, another day you have a geographical topic. So I was well versed with a lot of different topics. So you can also follow a similar pattern. Try to read some good essays, articles, and newspapers. Newspapers is, is essential, mere sabse, because uh, ultimately GDPI prep uh, also requires a decent level of current affairs knowledge. Because thirty percent of the GDP, uh, thirty percent of the PI, and specifically the VAT, is totally dependent on the on your uh, current uh, knowledge, current affairs knowledge, right? So a reading. B practice and C elimination technique. This, these are the three rules that I would give for VARC. Try to you implement the elimination technique as much as possible and that you will hone that skill with practice. So it won't come in a single day. It will take time, but it will eventually, it will eventually be uh, coming to you very naturally then. This is for VARC. Uh, coming to DILR section. DILR section uh, is a tricky section. I'll, I'll admit that. It's the most unpredictable section as well. You can predict VRC, you can predict QA. That's okay. There'll be six to seven questions of arithmetic, four to five questions of algebra, et cetera, et cetera. You can predict it. But you can't predict what kind of set you'll be getting in DILR. And these days, CAT is shifting from conventional sets to unconventional sets a lot. My recommendation would be A, start with basic Sudoku solving if you want to. Sudoku solving is like a starter for you. It'll help you develop the temperament to solve a DIR problem. It won't directly help you in DIR problem. Let me be very clear with it. If it's not that if you practice Sudoku's, you will be very good in DIR. But it will give you the skill set required. What are the skill set required for DIR? A basic temperament. You need to give 10 to 15 minutes to per set. If you are solving, let's say, 2, two or 2.5 sets, you have to give 12.5 to 15 minutes to per, per set, which requires patience. You can't just start solving and give up in the next 5 minutes. 
I am not able to do it. I'll leave that set. I'll go to the next set. This is not how DLR would be. You will be able to crack. You need to develop the temperament, patience. This will come from Sudoku. I remember the first Sudoku that I solved took me forty minutes to solve, and I was very adamant. I'll not get up from my chair until this problem is solved. And so you need to have a similar temperament in the initials. Right now, I can solve a Sudoku in five to seven minutes. This is the level of practice that I have done. So. Don't be afraid of solving problems and problems taking a lot of time. A friend of mine is currently preparing for CAT for this year's CAT. So he uh, texts me regularly that I am not able to solve a DILR set. It's taking one hour, one point five hours. I'm like, okay, everything is okay. Just keep practicing. One point five hours per set would reduce to ten minutes drastically once you cross a particular level of threshold. So like once you are done with fifty or sixty case sets or hundred case sets, your one hour time period will drastically reduce to fifteen minutes. You just have to have that patience. So, a uh, Sudoku for starters. Sudoku will also help a, a basic number crunching habit. However, I don't think that is very much re relevant. But still, a basic number crunching habit would help you in DIR section. This is a. B is my preparation for DIR was primarily based on uh, solving previous year questions. Previous year questions in DIR can form a base because similar set of uh, case lets reappear in CAT a lot of times. So games and tournaments, pipes and system, road and road and networks, etc., etc. There is a proper set list of DILRs that uh, LR DI sets that you have to practice. So best way to practice is previous year questions because they give you a benchmark up to what level you have to prepare. Don't go for random books, etc. That okay, this level, this book has LOD three, so this this type of levels you need to solve. Best benchmark previous year questions. Yeah, why should I trust any author or any book, right? If I have previous year questions, I know what CAD requires for me to do. So why am I wasting time? Just directly go solve cat questions. You won't be able to solve in in the first go, but eventually you will uh, be able to do it. Eventually you will increase your speed, and eventually you, it will come to you. So so Roku, uh, DLR questions, uh, previous year questions, and mocks. I'll come to mocks in a very uh, uh, next segment because mocks is very important. So DLR is Roku, previous year questions, and uh, mocks. Right, coming to QA now. Quantitative aptitude. Okay, so is. It's not as tricky as DILR, but it requires your time and investment. Why? Because there's a lot of long list of concepts. I'm not sure if you guys, uh, what level you are currently at, what which subject you are start currently studying. But promise me one thing: once you're done with done with all the concepts, you will create your personalized formula sheet. You won't rely on any coaching institute's formula sheet or any uh, you know online available formula sheet, because for that matter, you know what you need to know. No one else knows. Sit down, take a pen and paper, create a formula sheet for yourselves. What I did because I had a very less period of time. This this is for people who are let's say currently working somewhere or working professionals and not and are not able to devote a lot of time. My recommendation would be what I did. I started with ten year papers. Every concept used in every question, I just used to write it down. So now I, now I have a list of formulas and concepts which were used by CAT originally in their in their exams. So I'm not reading anything irrelevant. So I mark them. These are my priority one. I should not default in these formula list. In in this specific list, I should remember each and every formula, each and every concept. I should have practiced lot at least ten questions per concept, so that if a question from this set of uh, formula sheets or list concept list comes, I shouldn't get it wrong. This is what I did for like like twenty twenty five days period. If if you have a twenty twenty five days window, start with creating a formula sheet A. Practice. As much as possible, so there is no I can't define it. Uh, let do fifty questions, hundred questions, as much as time permits you solve it. Maths is basic. Maths is the time you give it, the more it will give you, give back to you. So it's like I use an analogy. It's like your girlfriend. The more the more time that you devote to her, the more love she'll give to you, and vice versa for uh, boyfriends as well. So similar thing. So maths is similar. Need to give time, and it'll it'll love you back a lot. This is how I uh, think maths is for me at least. Maths is my first love, so yeah. <laughs> A. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the quantitative aptitude, solving of uh, creating a formula sheet again, solving previous year questions and mocks. That's it. But you should be very clear with concepts. This is this is the prerequisite to what I am speaking, right? Uh, if someone is weak in mathematics or considers himself or herself weak in mathematics, don't be afraid or shy to think. What most of the people. Who I have met are afraid in mathematics. Do they see a question? 
दे थिंक फॉर लाइक टेन टू फिफ्टीन सेकेंड्स एंड दे लाइक मेरे से तो नहीं होगा ये दिस इज अब माई लेवल आई कॉन्ट डू इट फ्लिप द पेजेस गो टू द आंसर सोल्यूशन पेज सी द सोल्यूशन ओके ऐसे होना था ये क्वेश्चन एंड जस्ट मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज नॉट हाउ मैथ्स शुड बी सॉल्व बेस्ट वे टू सॉल्व मैथमेटिक्स इज टू टेक अ क्वेश्चन थिंक just keep thinking the sense of achievement that you will get once you are in when you solve a question on yourself is tremendous and it will boost your confidence to 1 to 50 this is what is required so don't just run after solutions give it some time don't run run from maths don't get scared from maths it will take some time but it will come to you all right so qa is again concept formula sheet uh previous questions and again uh, mocks this this is how i covered each and every section now what i did personally because i had a 2025 day window is mocks and mocks and mocks and mocks and previous questions so i solved each and every question of each section vrc dilr and py uh, and qa from the previous year questions i created my own formula sheet concept sheet so what my daily routine looked like covering at least one paper one previous year questions and if i am able to then two mocks one mock is de- daily one mock daily one py qa daily and if i am able to then second mock as well mocks are important because again analogy i'll i'll give is a of a covid vaccine covid vaccine if you remember used to hurt a little bit when once when you have to take a shot of it but that little pain can help you from getting infected in covid so the covid is your d day if you take a little pain while solving mocks you will be very well doing during your cat d day so it's like a uh, it's like a vaccine for you take the pain because a lot of people get disheartened by you know uh, looking at low marks and low scores in mock papers don't get disheartened this take take them as a vaccine or a uh, let's say preemptive measure from covid 19 you will ha- you will have little bit pain but eventually you will survive so take that pain enjoy that pain because just think that you are going to survive excellently beautifully gracefully on the d day when the cat is to happen mock doesn't just help in um, you know practicing it also helps you in time management and structuring structuring by structuring i mean strategy how you are going to attempt the paper are you going to solve rcs first are you going to solve the va first are you going to uh, do algebra question first or are you going to do from go- start from 1 2 3 4 5 6 what is your strategy going to be like how much time are you going to devote per question all these things come when you practice questions through mocks so this is the prerequisite of before going to cat i won't recommend the number of mocks that you should do because i personally didn't do more than uh, 30 35 ish but a lot of people say you should give 50 plus 100 plus i won't co- comment on that do as many as you can it's similar to solving qa questions do as many as you can right so this is done uh, section wise is done and mocks is done how to evaluate a mock this is also very important so i use a concept called potential score so let's say i solve a mock i secure uh, approximately 45 to 50 marks now is the 45 to 50 marks my highest potential that i could have scored probably not because what i'll say okay keeping the same level of knowledge that i have keeping the same skill set that i have right now if just the time limit had been uh, you know removed or eliminated from the pattern how much would i have scored if that score is let's say 80 and my actual score is 50 then you need to work a lot on your mocks because that means you are panicking or doing silly mistakes just because there is a time barrier in the exam you know the concept you know the con- formula everything you know you have practiced enough is just that you are panicking in a situation so you need to work you need to give more mocks so how i define the maximum number of mocks that you should give is when your potential score and your actual score is equal to is similar is same the difference between them is zero once your actual score is equal to your potential score that day you can say that okay with the current level of knowledge the current level of formula set the with the current level of practice level with the current level of skill set i can score 90 marks in cat then you are good to go you are good to go all the best enjoy your cat paper this is what i think is the should be the maximum number of mocks that you should give uh pretty much this is it uh three sections covered mocks give cur- uh, covered how to evaluate mocks is done anything specific that you guys want to ask you can ask in chat and then uh i'll try to answer it to my best ability and thank you okay i have given rights uh, to unmute themselves in the chat to the students 
So if anyone has any doubts, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can write in the chat box, and I can ask the Just question. Uh yeah, so I had uh I had a couple of questions. Uh, one of them was which newspapers exactly were you um uh, going through? Uh, that was one, and the other thing was uh the approach. Like I had a friend who just gave his uh cat uh last year itself. He's in uh F M S C right now. He also scored a a good uh percentile. So what the approach he told me was that I should probably focus on. uh things that i already know because at the end of the day in those subo 40 minutes uh i'll be even if i get 12 to 14 right okay in the amount of time that is there and i get them right at like an 80 to 90% accuracy uh that should be a book good enough and i have even about five mocks till now it's been like 90 90 95 99 and then 96 a full percentile based on the book previous years so is this approach better or is it better to go for a a wider a uh, concept range like instead of just specifically focusing on one thing all uh, right so what i think is if you should know all the basic concepts let's say a very simple a lot of people leave modern mathematics because it sometimes gets a little tricky and similarly geometry has a lot of theorems my basic argument is let's say if a very basic question of permutation combination comes or let's say of uh, redistribution of problem comes or uh, d distribution of problem comes this is a specific set of formula that has to be used you should be at least well versed with all the formulas so that you don't regret that yaar agar ek bar just have read this formula i would have marked this correct don't if let's say if you have a paucity of time or you are not able to uh, do all the concepts still i would recommend go through all the concepts go through all the formulas so that see this these setter questions determine your rank honestly because anyone who has prepared well will not get this get those wrong there is no point of leaving a question which is easy but it's just that you haven't covered it so easy questions all should have 100% accuracy i divided in easy medium uh, difficult so easy should have 100% accuracy for that you need to go through all the wide range of questions wide range of concepts so this is answer to your second question uh, i'm sorry i didn't hear, uh, hear your first question what was the first question uh, i was uh, just asking which newspapers uh, were you referring to uh, see i was preparing for upsc so i referred to hindu and the indian express however for cat specific preparation i would suggest indian express and if a little bit of business knowledge interests you then meet uh, don't need to go for hindu uh indian oh. express and uh, main should suffice okay okay thanks no worries okay one of the student asked in the chat that uh, how do you keep yourself motivated during the preparation uh okay again a very basic thing solve previous year questions if you are getting good marks if you are able to solve those cat questions you will definitely be motivated yourself that okay I don't know what CAT 2024 would ask me, but if the CAT was in 2022, I was able to solve a lot of questions. I know how to solve them. This is how motivation comes to you. A, this is external motivation. Internal motivation comes simply from discipline. <laughs> All right. So everything kept aside. If you are disciplined enough, I used to have, follow a very disciplined routine when I was preparing for UPSC. I used to sit in library from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So my total target was okay. I have to sit from 8 to 9, and once I have completed that time period. I was very satisfied. I was very motivated, motivated for the next day. Okay, so it's a streak going on. I have been going from eight a.m. to nine p.m. for the past fifteen days. I'll do it again for the next fifteen days. So there's a streak going on for me. This is how I used to keep myself motivated, disciplined. If you are asking for a benchmark motivation, then solve previous year questions. If you are able to solve previous year questions, you will automatically feel motivated. Okay, I am able to solve cat level questions now. Okay, one of the questions. Uh, that Yes. Yes, you can ask your question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hello, actually, sir. Uh, I am also doing preparation of UPSC, and I am in process of that. So uh, basically, I had given twenty third attempt, twenty uh, three attempt while I was working, and twenty four I took a gap year, and uh, my next twenty five attempt is going to be there. But I also have to be ready with a plan B. 
so basically my plan b is going to be a uh, cat or gmail so basically what should be the mindset while preparing for cat and gmail and not lose focus on our goal as well uh see honestly upsc is not a thing that you should do with you know side thing that you should prepare while preparing for cat or gmail so i would say just get a clarity on things what you want to do and you should prepare for one thing so i understand what where the backup thing is coming from i was at a similar situation that is the reason when i was in my final year i gave cat so that i just understand where i am currently i gave 25 days i attempted cat i got 99 percentile plus doesn't matter which college i converted doesn't matter which person i am getting if 25 first days of preparation i get, i can get 99 percentile i went on straight into upsc preparation for two years i have a gap of two years i prepared hell uh hard work given a hell of a hard work in for upsc preparation and once i knew that okay i am done with it my backup was ready but i never prepared simultaneously for both the exams and i would not recommend this to anyone have a clarity on the maximum number of attempts that you are going to give and trust me mba or primarily cat i am not sure about the gmat process how foreign universities evaluate your person's profile as i have never given cat i can only comment on uh, g i have never attempted gmat i can only comment on how cat and iims think cat and mba is a very 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 big uh, or i would say great opportunity for upsc aspirants i what i would suggest is give maximum of two attempts and just jump into cat preparation then since you are planning to give cat this year and you have skipped the this year's prelims and you are going to give next year prelims uh i would suggest go on at, like give at least 30 to 40% of your effort in cat so that you understand your skill set as right now and just give a few for the cat in cat uh, cat this year you will realize if 40% of the attempt translates into 95 or 97 percentile 100% of attempt will translate into what percentile just do this basic unitary method and then go for 25 20 25 prelims also anything else okay sir uh, so one more thing mm-hmm. uh means uh how to uh, make a balance means between the means how can we use our preparation into this the preparation for upsc into use or cat preparation to uh, upsc use yes sir uh, the upsc preparation which we are reading so much so is that if any uh, how can we mold that into using oh, definitely uh, so vrc is very chill for you guys then because you can read anything Uh, a lot of people read only one set of specific thing let's say a person coming from finance industry or working in a business industry is only used to reading business and finance they are they are not used to reading uh, philosophy or let's say kant's theory or aristotle's theory in the ethics section that we read so they are not used to read these read those things in vrc you have an edge because you have a very good reading speed so uh, i used to complete the newspaper in 40 minutes so might you be able to do it so in 40 minutes if you are able to read the entire newspaper vrc is a cake walk for you this is a b in gdpi prep you have a lot of advantage so most of the bad questions that came this year were all current affair related ukraine russia the issue of water crisis in bangalore how would you solve them i used to quote a lot of things that i used to study in my upsc preparation so don't worry you will have a lot of advantage uh, during the gdpi prep specifically okay any other question any other students if they want to ask questions you can just ask your questions including yourself uh so i wanted to ask one question with respect to vrc so i have uh, tried preparing for vocabulary but i feel like i mean the preparation is endless for it because there are millions of words and on top of that cat also asks you for uh, synonyms and antonyms so how do you go about preparing for vocabulary do, do you think any particular set of words for example like business jargon or something of that sort is tested or i mean you can't just you just have to be good with vocabulary i know on a on a sense it would be i don't think you have to be good with vocabulary for cat they aren't asking any synonyms or antonyms uh you just need to understand the crux of the passage you need to understand what the passage is saying to you the best way is organic learning man matlab i have seen people you know going writing list of word definitions etc etc i personally don't think that is productive sorry to be harsh but uh the best way for me is organic learning read newspapers read articles anywhere you are you get stuck just google that word don't remember don't write anything 
it should come naturally to you 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 start slowly and gradually you start learning those words okay so this word was used twice or thrice and now you remember okay i i googled it that time as well now i'm googling it again so you'll form your brain will start forming dots and connections and eventually you'll learn words i won't recommend you to intentionally improve your vocabulary read your vocabulary would be a by product of it and obviously a uh, cat doesn't ask any antonyms and synonyms like of a questions so you are pretty chill, chill on that side then oh that's great because last year only i gave my ip mat in that they asked so i thought probably cat is also sort of related to that okay so a the most important thing be well aware be well versed what your the cat preparation is just don't keep preparing that is why i emphasize a lot on pvc questions because so i had a friend who asked me some similar question or someone someone called me for guidance and they said okay tell me what is the time limit for dir section i'm like you should have this basic prep done before you even jump into the preparation you should know three sections type of questions number of questions for algebra number of questions for arithmetic number of questions for geometry this is the pre hygiene before you enter into any preparation don't trust anyone again go search past 10 year papers look at those papers analyze those papers on your own this is the best method anything else yes so uh, i actually i face a lot of issue while going through our scenes like i i am not able to get the gist of passage i am not able to connect uh, the passage like what the author's tone is how is carry is going so what was the strategy in comprehension do that okay so since you are struggling a lot in understanding or you know remembering the stuff one basic method is summarize the passage on your read the passage leave the questions uh, questions don't matter at this point of time read the passage open a white paper rough paper and just write what you understood and then tally with the original passage did i miss something or was i able to write down the exact same thing what the author used uh, wanted to t- tell me or was it something of my own interpretation then you will realize okay where am i going wrong is it my speed is too fast or i am not able to focus on while reading or i am just not able to understand uh, you know the tone of the passage because the tone of the passage will reflect when you summarize it and you will understand okay what is the tone of the passage when you start writing you will realize okay probably this word should replace this word so that the tone of the passage is correctly uh, reflected in my summary so the basic remedy for this i would say is just start summarizing the uh, passage on your own 50 to 60 words or 100 words maximum of uh, 100 is a lot of limit uh, by the way 80 should be the maximum limit to summarize a passage and that should be the crux of the passage and should also reflect the tone of the passage and eventually you will uh, you know be able to come up to the eliminating options part then okay any other questions so okay we have one question from one of the students that uh, what is the uh, how 10th and 12th marks affect your uh, profile or does it have a bad impact if you are not well scored or does it help you to have a good score in 10th and 12th see matlab uh, they are uncontrollables so you can't really do something obviously they have a weightage in your uh, iim admissions depending on the institute there are different variations i am in though probably gives a much higher weightage for class 10th marks i am calcutta gives sort of like probably for class 12th marks so there are different set of criteria for each different iims but there is no point worrying about that those are your uncontrollables i am pretty sure if you score 99.9 plus in cat you will have a decent chance of converting any iim irrespective of what your class 10th or class 12th percentage was so focus on what you have for right now controllables control the controllables get 99.9 plus percentile in cat and your class 10th and class 12th marks would be overlooked and you will get a great admission then so david thank you for joining us and sharing your experience no worries so thanks, thanks a lot a lot for calling me i hope the uh, session was a little bit useful for all the all of them